everyone. Hi, it's Rebecca Parham here of Let Me Explain Studios. Welcome to VidCon Now, uh, the Draw With Us event. I'm here, uh, like I said, I'm with Let Me Explain Studios. And if you guys want to talk to us, want to ask us questions, we're going to have questions fielded to us via Twitter, via a hashtag. It is hashtag VC Now Draw With Us. Yeah, so VC Now Draw With Us. It should be right here below. Um, and my name is Rebecca Parham. Let me explain studios. Uh, I have been doing YouTube professionally now for like three or four years. Uh, I went to school for computer animation and a lot of people called me crazy when I decided I wanted to go onto YouTube. But uh, here I am now uh, talking in front of you guys and I make a living out of this. So who's crazy now, right? <laughs> so I want to kick it over to one of my uh, fellow artists, animators, and all around good person, Den, Cypher Den. Thanks, Becca. Hey guys, my name is Cypher Den, or Den. I usually have pink hair, but not today, just not today. I graduated from Fashion Institute of Technology, but usually I wear pajamas and I draw cartoons all day. And let me send you guys off to Something Else YT. Hello, it's me, Adam, from Something Else YT. I'm here with my homeboy, Elon Musk. He uh, <laughs> unfortunately won't get out of the car, but uh, I make cartoons on the internet. Uh, uh, I make songs and whatnot, and uh, I, I, th I think you can find my link in the in the description below. Something else, YT, you know, it's whatever. But anyways, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing some uh, some fun fun stuff today. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I uh, hope you guys uh, have a good time just watching us do our thing. Yeah, awesome. So why don't we just kick off uh, our little conversation with one of the questions that we have already? Um, let's see. When did you guys, this is from, I think this is from Thomas Percy fan, or maybe Tilly Vids, I'm not sure. Uh, when did you guys realize your channel was going to be really popular? Like, what stage were you like, holy crap, that's a lot of subs. Dan, why don't you tell us? So, <laughs> mine is actually really funny because I was taking a nap one Saturday morning, and then... I woke up and there was just a bunch of subs that was rolling in from like my stalker video. So I'm like, I might be dreaming, but I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to go back and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Becca? Oh gosh. Um, so my, my big uh, breakout video, the one that yeah. you know got really popular really quick was a thing called how to creep out your favorite YouTubers at conventions. And I don't know what happened, but the algorithm was suddenly like, hey, we're going to point all the spotlights onto this video. And I gained like, I think I hit 100,000 subscribers inside of two months. And that's like ridiculous, right? But I really don't yeah. think it hit me officially until I got to a million subscribers. And I was in the back of an Uber having just visited the YouTube space in L.A., and as soon as it happened, my phone exploded and my Uber driver, like I was sobbing in the back and my Uber Aww. driver was like, who is this crazy girl that I'm driving? <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. What about you, Adam? Uh, I probably, when I reached, I think it was when I reached my first like 10,000 subscribers. Cause that's when I was like starting to blow up. Uh, and like when I first got my, uh, my new, uh, my new mm -hmm. ride. I think that's when I realized that things were just going to be like a okay for me. That's a, that Aren't totally real right ride <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that you have behind you. <laughs> so we're going to be drawing for you guys today. So we're just going to kick it over to the drawing board, and we're going to continue the conversation over there as we doodle. Sound good to everybody? I like drawing. <clears throat> yes, I and think. I totally know. Remembered where the drawing. Thing was okay uh, so it looks like den and i are gonna draw for you here for a bit <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got i'm you. okay so i'm in blue so hello I'm very much so purple yay so oh, very can, can, you, can you text me what the thing was oh my gosh adam <laughs> den <laughs> don't worry I'm, I'm doodling i'm doodling hey uh adam if you look at our zoom you. chat it should be in there at the top. Okay, there we go. Or maybe one of our lovely hosts. Yeah, our lovely host has just uh, shown it to you. Thank you, so. lovely host. Thank All you right, so text. So, yeah. anyways, uh, let's let's look at another question. If given the opportunity, what canceled cartoon series would you guys bring back? I think that's from. It's either from Trash for T Young. I. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, if I had the opportunity to bring back a cancel cartoon series, that's a really good question. Um, I love Gravity Falls, um, but yes. but the problem is, is that that show was so perfect in the way it ended. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I almost like as much as I love Gravity Falls and I would love to see more of those characters, I just don't think it would be the same because it was a show that was made to end. But um, I would love to see more Ed Ed Nettie, Invader Zim. Um, what about you guys? I think Invader really... Zim is my number one. Like, I want them to hurry up and make that that one already because it's clear it's clear that like the reception for the for the movie that just came out. God, that was such a good movie. Into, it was the, like the, into the Florpus, yes. Yeah, into the, the Florpus. Color. This is so good. Yeah, and the, new, the the fact that they kept the new the old art style while also presenting like this new version of the art style is just so fantastic, and it's still still kept the same writing style the same humor the same everything and it, 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 it i don't know it's just the perfect i think the perfect reboot and how most reboots should should like sort of do their thing i not this, i agree not entirely this lion king crap that we got nowadays <laughs> oh don't i really you just love like... how in light with that lion king reboot everyone kept calling it live action and all of us animators are like um wait a second <laughs> <laughs> Everything in that movie is made with 3D, so it's technically still animated. <laughs> it's like yeah, a... Rocco's Modern World was really good too. The oh, uh, Modern that. Life. Yeah, yeah Modern you... Life. It was, it was, it was, it was meh. It was a good. It was good. really. I liked, the... I liked it. I thought it was like very the... much what I remember. I like the I message. I don't know. I don't think I like the whole meta ness of it. All right, like the uh. the, the the whole. Uh, we gotta bring back this '90s show, blah blah blah, uh, type of thing, and bring it into this new age. It just seemed too meta to me, I think. But I do like that they tried to include uh, different groups into it. Um, hold up, let me. I can't. I can't find them. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I am trying my hardest right now, as you can see. But I am having trouble getting in. But don't worry. I I'm will trying. be there. I'm trying to draw Olaf the snowman from memory, and I'm probably... <laughs> he, he just has a carrot nose. Yeah, I just... I'm trying to remember his very odd shape. Um, oh, head. I was thinking the wrong password. <laughs> Have you ever played that game of just, like, drawing something from memory? Oh, yeah, you. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> I'm really... Like, as weird as it is, I'm bad at it, too, except I'm always able to draw... Squidward completely well <laughs> from memory. I think that's a skill. I used to draw a SpongeBob a lot. My mom was obsessed over SpongeBob, so he's just stuck in my memory now. Forever. <laughs> I think it's just one of those it's now become one of those Mickey Mouse cases of it is it is a cartoon character that is so like in front of you at all times and it's just part of like your subconscious now that you can't help but know exactly the way yeah. it's supposed to look. Oh, that's a great Olaf. I love that Olaf. I have no idea how his body works, but <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like a marshmallow. I know the 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 middle one is much smaller than uh. Who undo? No <laughs> The funny thing about this whole setup for everybody <laughs> watching is that when you undo something, it undoes anything anybody draws. So I could just like draw this and hit undo. And if Adam suddenly drew something, it would undo what he just did. I'm sorry. And that's how you myself. can mess with people in here. <laughs> Don't undo Adam. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Good. Let's good. See. So let's look at it. Let's look at another question that we have fielded to us. Uh, da, 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 da. What is the best part of your job right now? I think that's from Tilly Vids. Uh, I get uh, to stay home and draw with my dog all day. Adam, your brush is muy, muy thick. <laughs> is it like, thick on your screen? Thick, it's thick yeah. on our screen. It's like with, with two C's thick. <laughs> what? What, boy? <laughs> Okay, hold up. Let me see. It looks like he's drawing a ketchup. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you ever draw the ketchup packet before? <laughs> uh, 
actually you have what have you, you ever like drawn with something that you that you weren't supposed to draw with before like like a ketchup package uh, yes like a stick in the sand well, for instance, when I was in art school before I got to Ringling, because I took art classes at my first college, he, the, my teacher was like, okay, use something that you wouldn't normally use for art, use it for art. And I had a lot of like makeup that I never wore. So I just did uh this entire like drawing painting thing with nothing but makeup. And it was actually really, really cool. So, but it was all cheap makeup. <laughs> I did exactly that. When I was young, I didn't know uh, what artists used to draw with. So I stole one of my mom's makeup brushes. I think it's one of those lip gloss things. And mm -hmm. I used that as a paintbrush with watercolor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Did you get in trouble for got. that? <laughs> I don't think she knows. I don't think she knows yet. <laughs> Well, she knows now. <laughs> She'll find out. She's like, that's what happened to all my makeup, huh? Uh, I find that whenever you let a secret slide to just your audience, it will absolutely get to the person <laughs> that <laughs> you didn't want it to get to. Guys, don't tell anyone. Don't tell don't anyone. Tell anyone. Oh. No, it was funny because when I was in London for the first time, my mom and I went to go see uh, Les Mis, Les Miserables. And fantastic that, yeah. show. Like the London production is fantastic. Wait, 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 and wait. As wait, somebody wait. who doesn't know what Lema Blah Blah is. <laughs> <laughs> you uncultured swine. No, no. Um <laughs> Lay is is a Lay is a show, it's a musical about the French Revolution. And it's it's you know, it's pretty old. I think a lot of you know musical theater kids know about it. And it's got like some really iconic music to it, like um uh you know <laughs> the one yeah the one thing right uh on my own sorry on my own um do you hear the people sing singing the song of angry men that one um and so we were watching it and the main character is jean valjean and the guy who was playing jean valjean in london was like his voice was like butter like Oh, and I'm a singer myself. So when when you know a singer is impressed with another singer, you know that person is amazing, right? So yeah. I, as a joke, forgetting that I have an audience for a moment, as a joke said, I would totally marry the guy who plays Jean Valjean on London right now. Guess what oh, my no. audience did? <laughs> What'd they they looked it do? up who is playing Jean Valjean, they found his Twitter and they said, get that boy. <laughs> Did you get married? Yes. Are you married? Yes, now? That's the big secret now. I married the guy who plays Jean Valjean. <laughs> <laughs> you can see by my multitudinous wedding rings. Congratulations, Becca. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, someone else had to get married as part from you in this community. <laughs> You're the only only married lady. Am I really? Look at yeah. Rebecca finally got, got... Oh, like, oh. I'm no longer I'm no longer the uh, the girlfriend fairy. I'm joined the married life. <laughs> and just for the record, this is a joke. <laughs> like to anybody watching, this is in fact a joke. You'll get news articles saying <laughs> Rebecca confirmed married on married now. <laughs> secret married to the guy who plays Jean Valjean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's still playing, but yeah. <laughs> What is going on on this this drawing board? I swear. <laughs> By the way, uh, neither Adam nor I answered that last question. Wait, which question? Uh, think, what's the yes. best part of our job? Uh, oh, uh, you go. I need some time to think. <laughs> I think for me, it has to be the creative freedom. Um, just getting up in the morning and making all your own decisions and deciding, I want to, to do this today. I want to, you know, draw this into my video and I get to decide what kind of video I want to make. I think that's like the best part about it. Um, and it's something that a lot of artists, you know, it's kind of this holy grail that a lot of artists try to find and not everybody can make a living doing it. And so we are in a very yeah. fortunate situation where we actually do have complete creative freedom over what we do and of course that's not to say we don't take what our audience wants into account that doesn't take we don't 
we have to be mindful of the YouTube algorithm and what it wants to see and what it w won't allow these days, but we still ultimately get to make the decision, you know? So what about you, Adam? Was that sufficient? Yes, hold up. My mom is at my door. <laughs> your mom is at your door? Yeah. You bringing you brownies? It's all I right, I said so. hi. Bringing you fresh I, I baked text bread? Texas to just head in the house. I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get in trouble with mama. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let me look at some other questions while we're waiting. Yes. But, but. The best, I think the one of the one of the best perks, one of the best things I like about this job is the fact that I'm able to make whatever I want and not have to like, I don't know, just like not be stuck. I mean, I was gonna say not be stuck in like a desk cubicle, but I guess I still am. Uh, the only difference is I actually like what I'm doing, uh, and I'm able to like make make things that I just genuinely enjoy making. Um, uh, and uh, I think I think that's also uh, honestly the best part. That and the fact that I'm able to post things online and people people will tell me that it's able to make their day, which is just so freaking awesome. The fact that something that I'm basically making for myself is also being made for everybody else, um, anybody who's watching it, and is able to sort of resonate with what I'm watching, or if they're having a bad day, make a good day out of what I'm making. Um, I don't know. I think that's really awesome. It's really cool. <laughs> you know, I, I like that too, because what I find so interesting is that whenever I share my stories and my experiences, you always find that you're, that you are opening up to more people and people are, you know, the, your stories resonate with people and they relate to it and they say, yeah, you know, something like that happened to me or that exact thing happened to me. And, and it makes people feel less alone. You know, it makes people feel like that, you know, someone else is going through the exact same hardship or the exact same crazy craziness that you are. And, oh, yeah, that embarrassing thing happened to me once, you know, and that's exactly the way I felt. And it just it just really is a great way to connect to people. Storytelling, I think, is like one of the most powerful things in our arsenal as artists to to do is to tell stories. So I love that part of it. I love being able to to make connections with people like that. Heck, yeah. So let's see, next question. Uh, from Sammy the Toe Eater. Great, uh, <laughs> great name there. I saw that Rebecca and Cypherdin had that drawing glove thingy. How does that help with the drawing? Well, it doesn't really help necessarily with the drawing. It keeps our ucky, yucky uh, hand juices Sweaty on hands. the screen. Because <laughs> we get sweaty and and the oils of our hands get all on the screen and it makes the screen all gross and it does make your hands stick like if you yeah. have a really gross screen then your hand doesn't glide across the screen like it's supposed to so yeah yep. we try to keep our screens clean yeah so technically while you're drawing you're cute yeah, at the do. same time yeah where's yours adam <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You, you want to borrow mine? I got you. Here's oh, mine. Oh, thank you. Let, yeah, me just, <laughs> let me just. Pink is a perfect Hold color. Up. Take it. Take it. You got it? You got it? I, okay, I got cool. It. I think I got it. <laughs> let me okay. see. Let me see. Let's see. Add. What's some more, some more, some more. We're doing wizards? Okay. Where, where are you finding the yes, questions again? You're finding them in the Discord, the, the, right? The, not the Discord, the, Never the Zoom mind. chat. The Zoom chat. I shall continue to relay as the question giver. Um, from Mine on Trad Life, any, sec any, any sec suggestions for redeveloping drawing skills after not practicing for years? I stopped drawing for so long, I lost the fine motor skills I had developed from drawing when younger basically just get into it just start drawing again um do exactly what you did in order to get the skills in the first place um i would say you know just practice draw something you really really like to draw just to kind of get you in the swing of things um any suggestions from you guys just draw as much as you can draw things that you like and um i like going through uh references and stuff like that and just redrawing images I think that helps out when it comes to trying to build a, a library in your head of things to draw. So you can just draw out of your head more often instead of like referencing all the time. Because just keep redrawing what you take from the reference, redraw it in your own style again and again, and then you'll be able to draw whatever you want. 
Yes. Uh, Anything to add, Adam? Uh, yes, I was 1000% paying attention to the question and I agree with all of that, what you just said. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Um, <laughs> Candies. <laughs> what, okay, from Dolphin Treasure, who are your favorite classical artists? Which era of art is your personal favorite? Um, classical art, does that mean like we go back to the Da Vinci days or the, uh, yeah. or just to kind of anything that is not YouTube related? <laughs> Because I think, you know, I don't really have a, a a personal favorite as far as art goes. Uh, Baroque is kind of fun, um, mostly yeah. because you get to say flying buttresses and it's not, you know, it's not inappropriate. Because <laughs> that's, yeah. that's an art history joke right there. <laughs> but um i really i really love um ha, 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 ha. i understood that reference but anyways uh, um so i think like one of my favorite periods of animation was hmm. probably like gosh the golden age of of looney tunes like the chuck jones era um i find like a lot of my work is definitely uh influenced by chuck jones in and, and so i think that's probably my favorite as far as animation goes um what would you guys say um i was actually highly influenced by um comic book art Ooh. so i i actually wanted to be a comic book artist and that's why i went to school and then eventually i realized that maybe i just like drawing cartoons so i mean so, sounds good right yay Get to draw Spider-Man every now and then? Yes? Wait, uh, what was the question again? Something about classical art? Class yeah, your favorite uh, period of classical art. Although we kind of took it in a more modern route of like, she loves the comic book era and I love the Chuck Jones stuff. Okay, so I don't know any classical art. I'm not gonna, I'm not, and not even going to lie. But one of my favorite things, one of the things that kind of inspired, um, inspired me to do art um, especially now, today, I would say, because um, I've already talked about all the stuff that's inspired me in the past, like all the animators and whatnot. Um, what inspired me to, what's inspiring me today is uh, the, the Scott Pilgrim books. I freaking love those books. They, they are so freaking, I don't know, it's just so funny in such an outlandish world and you can't really find any comics out there that are that are sort of, or uh, uh, graphic novels that, that are out there that are sort of like on the same level as this this weird world that they, they yeah. that that Scott Scott uh, crap uh, 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 him the guy who had made it made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that, especially art wise. It's such a beautiful art stuff. Yeah. So I Massey. So from Massey Lissy, I guess. What is the weirdest thing you've ever drawn? Uh. You, you, your your style is kind of out there, Adam. So I'm really interested to know what you think is the weirdest thing you've drawn. I will draw a weird thing right now. Hold up, <laughs> let me see. I'm right here. I'm right here. You know, it, it's weird because <laughs> there are plenty. There are plenty of moments that I have had in animation where I will just be drawing something and it's something outlandish and crazy and weird and i'll just like step back and i say this is my job like what am i yeah. doing this is what i do for a living how is this my job so i think that happens so often in animation that you just kind of lose track of the weird things that you find yourself drawing yes. what about you den i uh I drew a lot of stuff for uh, PewDiePie animations before. So there's like a whole bucket of weird in those animations. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of weird stuff. There's some good, there's some good animations out there. I think oh, yeah. with the PewDiePie stuff, I love this. Oh yeah, you did a great job on, on Felix's stuff. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh. How do I decide? Okay. Um, 
From Blue Baby Tori, how do you transfer a fantastic idea in your head onto paper? Whenever I try, I end up drawing nothing close to the brilliant idea I had. Um, I say that that, like drawing what is actually in your head is a skill in and of itself that needs to be practiced. Um, I, to take a book from a, from a master, there is this gentleman named Richard Williams who is, you know, he wrote the book. He wrote the Bible on animation. And he said that it took 30 years of, of, professional anima of a professional animation career for him to finally draw exactly what was in his head. So, you know, I struggle with it all the time. You know, we do this every single day, multiple hours, and I still struggle with getting exactly what's in my head onto the screen in front of me. And it just really comes down to practice. So... I would just say, and, and a lot of the art advice that you're going to hear from us is just practice because really that's all it comes down to. Um, but if anybody wants to get more specific than that, go ahead. Um, just like I said before, it's just practicing a lot and trying to draw stuff that you're not used to as well. So let's say you don't draw, you don't draw trees a lot. Get a lot of references from different trees and start like building up your memory in your head and how you draw it and the more you draw it the more you'll learn how to draw specific things and that's the best way to start learning how to draw from your head and references help too like people don't talk about using reference enough but if oh, yeah. you use references you kind of like have an understanding and you just build pictures and photoshop it in your head in a way and i think that helps a lot watch this you want to see me draw an apple that's in my head Yes. Where is it? Show us. I kind of took Adam. over this page. Right here. What a cute oh, apple. 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 <laughs> 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 apple. The bite noise. There you go. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. Ow, you killed him. <laughs> like, hey, hey, <laughs> apple. <girls>. Bite. <laughs> Uh, Wait, I got a question. I got a question from Bored Banana that I really like. Okay. It's it's stumping me right now. So, if you were to punch yourself and it hurts, are you weak or are you strong? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I think you have to go into exactly what you decide is weak and strong as far as pain tolerance like pain if, tolerance if, is, is okay. your pain tolerance high or is it low if i punch myself and it hurts and is my pain tolerance high or low actually no in terms of strength muscles why or not muscles like just your arm like being able to punch a wall break through it are you able to break through that wall or not if you hurt yourself when you punch yourself i think like <laughs> Go, go on, Becca. On, okay, on. so <laughs> this is an interesting this is an interesting thing in and of itself because I've heard of the idea of the reason why you can't tickle yourself, like when you you know try to you know tickle your own ribs, tickle your feet, wherever you're ticklish, it's because your brain is anticipating the touch and therefore it is like not surprised by the fact that it's being touched in this one ticklish area. So maybe something like that is 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 there's a connection there because if i know that this fist going into my face is going to hurt my survivalist instincts are going to take over and my brain is going to say pull back pull back pull back you know so i don't know if you can really like fully punch yourself to the extent that you would punch another human being out of anger or punch a wall out of anger but i don't know I, I really don't know. I've never gotten angry enough to like pull a punch on someone or something. <laughs> right. What about you're, you? You're right. I, <laughs> the entire time, was just thinking about that one thing that people thought, or the, that one thing that people will tell you, like you can't bite off your own finger. Hmm. Is that true? That's not true. I think I could bite off my own finger if I if I, I tried hard enough. Hold up, let me see. I think if there's a risk factor to it, you might be able to. <laughs> I'm trying, but it's not working. I like 
<laughs> Again, I think it's that whole survival instinct that, that comes into play where you just can't yeah. help but not want to bite off your own finger. Because eventually it'll get to a point. Okay, here's here's the thing. You will eventually get to a point where it hurts too much and you have to stop at that point. But a person coming from the outside to bite your finger off doesn't have an idea of how much pain you're feeling, so they're just going to keep going. So I honestly don't think it's oh, it's possible to bite your own finger off. Okay. How did this come to this conversation? Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. so this is, hear, hear, hear me out here, hear me out okay. I think the reason why I think you can bite your finger off, here, here's why I think this. So yes, I do agree. However, if you know that you're going to bite off your finger, like you're looking at your hand and your hand is in your mouth and you're going to chomp, I don't think you can because your survival instincts are going to be like, ah, no, don't do it. You, that's, we need that. It's our finger. Uh, but however, comma, what if, what if you were like, you were like in a dark room, just like, just like parting it up or something and, 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 and your arm, your hand just so happens to be on a table that you just didn't know was there. You weren't paying attention that this was your hand and you're like, oh, I gotta bite something. I gotta bite something. Oh, look at this arm that I don't know is mine. Take it, uh, pull it to you, uh, chomp, you bite off your finger. I think you can do that. If not, if you can't, I think that's brilliant. The human design is fantastic, and I think we should get a little bit more upgrades. So I wanna, I wanna rip up. On <laughs> Have you seen those like science experiments where they put like a fake hand and they like, like hit it with a hammer and people just start like flailing? Uh, it's a fake hand, like next right. to where the hand is supposed to oh. be. It's just hidden. It's called, it's called empathy. <laughs> <laughs> it's called understanding that that's gonna hurt and you feel in your heart ah no i would not want that to happen to my hand so i'm gonna reflexively move my hand away mm -hmm. yeah so let's actually answer a question that is being asked <laughs> of us <laughs> shall we yes on um, track <laughs> okay this one uh oh for for you adam um from Yihana Tan. What's up? Uh, did you expect your song "I'm Something Else" to be so successful? Uh, honestly, no. I was really I don't know. I don't know what I thought of it. Like it was it was a fun song that I made. I thought it was pretty. I don't know. I like it. I like the song. Um, Good song, I, bub. Thank you. I Yay. really, I really, I think I'm more proud of my other one though, Help O L, because it's just like more lyrically sound. The other one, sort of like we had the 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 help or my I'm something else. We sort of just like the the lyrics were a little moved around, and that kind of upset me. But I don't know. I like the song. I just didn't expect it to blow up to the to the. Uh, to the levels it did now. I think it's like what, like almost 51, 52 million views, which is it's incredible. Insane. I definitely Amazing. actually no heck no, I didn't see that coming. Holy crap. <laughs> Imagine predicting that. Yeah. <laughs> this song, I'm the, my ego is this high that I, I know for a fact it's going to get at least 25 million views. No, I because so. I'm a musical genius. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I don't think any of us really, ex like, we can kind of guess what might be popular, but you always, it's funny because you'll go in making a video that you think has all of the right, you know, bells and whistles and everything to please the algorithm, and it will be your least performing video. And the one that you were like, huh, oh, this is kind of a cool, cool idea, an okay idea, you put it out there and it's the most popular one. Like my example is, is my most popular video right now is the dress codes video that I did, like my school dress codes. And I, that was just like, oh, this is a fun idea. I had no idea it would be my most popular video. And that's, that's so crazy to me. Yeah. Um, so speaking of videos, um, let's see, where was it? Uh, Cyborg S girl, Cyborg's girl. Uh, what is your favorite video that you have made? Famous Lame. Famous Lame. I think Famous Lame is probably my number one favorite video. I put like a lot of like thought into it. It was it was made at a a little bit of a, a of a downtime uh, in my life, but I think I don't know. I really wanted to like make it, and I think that's the one I'm I'm more proud of than than my other ones. But I'm still proud of my other ones. Can I say uh, about that video in particular? Um, very often it's 
it's easy to to not say anything with your art like not bring up an interesting conversation because when you bring up a conversation you invite a lot of people to be mean and to be you know say no you're yeah. wrong on this you're wrong on that and it can be very divisive at times but you really wanted to say something you really wanted to touch on a subject that not people that a lot of people don't really understand and that there are a lot of drawbacks to being famous and so for opening up that conversation i think i think that was really really cool of you thank yeah. you that hit I so many try. levels thank mm -hmm. you i tr i try <laughs> <laughs> um so dan what is your favorite video um i always say that my favorite video is the one that i'm going to make next Ooh. because i feel like the if i keep looking back i'm just gonna go that video was amazing like how can they top that you know mm -hmm. so if you just keep look, looking forward to like the videos you haven't made yet you just want to make it better all the time i'd like to think yeah that's, yeah, that's good um yeah. my favorite video that i have ever made um is probably the video about my abusive uh theater teacher ah uh, yeah yeah and gotta love that i guy. gotta love that <laughs> well not that guy it was that girl it was oh, um, that girl yeah that woman <laughs> well and mostly because you know along the same lines of you know your video saying something and meaning something to people because you opened up a conversation about fame mine meant something to a lot of people because it was able to people were able to watch it and say whoa wait a minute this all sounds like something that i'm going through right now or something i went through and i had no idea that this could be a potentially abusive situation like 10 minutes after i uploaded the video i started getting a lot of twitter comments saying hey becca this was like a wake-up call for me because because it, and that was exactly what i set out to do with that video is like i didn't want to sit there and tell you okay this is exactly what an abusive situation looks like this is what it all is I wanted to just tell my story, show you what I saw, show you the signs that I saw, mm -hmm. and I wanted you to make your own conclusion from there. And a lot of people did. And I, and you know, that's the reason I make these videos is to make people feel like they're less alone in these circumstances and maybe even like make some really good changes in their life, like getting out of a situation like that. So that's that was probably my favorite and it was also really cathartic for me to finally tell that story heck yeah that's pretty cool yeah. so yeah. next question oh we're at the 40 minute mark oh gosh that went by very Ooh. very quickly right um so that means we gotta pull back from the drawing board um any final question let's see uh oh so Salty Scythe says, Pop-Tarts toasted in a toaster or heated in the microwave? Uh, I don't eat Pop-Tarts. No, toaster. <laughs> toaster, what is wrong with you? Toaster. Why would you ever do it in a microwave? Yeah, what? like, it why is it mushy. that... Yeah, like, microwave makes everything mushy. Or, yeah, it would be like a soggy yeah. mess. I don't want to drink my <laughs> toaster strudel. <laughs> I, in all honesty, I've never actually tried putting a pop tart in a microwave so who knows maybe there's something to it but i like i don't eat pop tarts that that often but anytime i have it's always in the toaster i'm not even gonna lie pop tarts kind of stinky oh pop tarts yes, don't touch no, it no I'm, a, I'm more of a i'm more of a, a toaster strudel man myself mm, or a I... uh, hashtag m m sponsored by oh gosh uh, oh yeah if i have right, my bag here we of go. m &Ms right now here's i got it for you did it already <laughs> eat my m m's <laughs> okay as much as my we we actually got two giant boxes of these new uh, fudge brownie ones in the mail and i shared some with my mom and she was like these are honestly like the best m m's i've ever had so i'm like cool we got plenty <laughs> so be, there you uh, go I'm, I'm glad I, I'm glad I could unpromptly bring that. Up. Yeah, bring in our sponsor. I love stupid crap like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's see. We're, I think we still have a few more minutes. Um, heck yeah. How many uh, from? Oh, I know. I know. Access Monday. Hi, Access Monday. Um, how many hours per week would each of you put in? Do you think you could do just as well with fewer hours or is it all absolutely necessary? So how overworked are you two? 
<laughs> not too not too over i don't know um i'm okay uh, <laughs> I'm all right. and no i um i put in more hours than i should probably um there are nights where well it's usually having to do with crunch time if i really need to get a video out soon and crunch time is an issue i will sleep in my office so <laughs> There's that, yeah. but I think it's just, it's an ever evolving thing when you get more people on board to help you, um, when you kind of begin to streamline your own process more then you can have more hours to actually have a life, but it really is, it's a process, you know, I would say, and I'm getting better. I'm, I'm not overworking myself as much. I, uh, go then on. go on. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say that I feel like college, like, made me the way I am because of, like, crunch time in college was just terrible, especially with thesis. So it's kind of hard to break away from that. You kind of have to, like, break away completely, but it's hard. May I may I ask, is a lot of your um, self-worth based in around how many hours you put in, then? Uh, I, I just like drawing. That's the problem. So like, I could be I drawing. Feel, yeah, because uh -huh. but I feel restless if I'm not working on something, if I'm not actively doing something, and that's part. And, you know, my school did the exact same thing to me, so I completely understand where you're coming from there. Yeah, no, it's like it's just drawing all the time. Like I like drawing, and if I'm not drawing, I'm practicing drawing or you know the interesting else. thing. The interesting thing is I'm actually going to be taking a break. I'm, I'm working on two more videos and then I'm going to be taking about a two month break just so that way I can sort of recharge. Um, just cool. because like as much as I love doing this, I don't think it's healthy for me to sort of sit at my desk, um, uh, sit at my desk and and just constantly you know work. I, I, want, I need to have sort of like a social life, whether that right now since you know everybody needs to stay inside and wear the masks and wash your hands um i i can't even like talk to people on like this court or anything because of how much i'm constantly working i even almost forgot to to uh uh come on here show up for the yeah. show up yeah. for the vidcon now yeah, event yeah I was, I was i was working all night and i like Work, working working <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sleeping maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, so I get one thousand percent overslept, but it was because I was I was working all night and I just forgot to. Yeah, it was just. Bad. So on but, that note, on that note, I actually have to draw this all to a close. Um, uh, Adam, yeah. Adam, go ahead. You say your goodbyes. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching all of this. This this whatever this was. It was a fun time, and I hope you guys had a fun time. Uh, don't forget to. Uh, uh, do you, does it will this have a like comment and subscribe don't forget to, to like that smash button uh and <laughs> uh, check out everybody in the in the links below uh then what do you want to say but 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 the bye to bye you know what do you want to do yeah thanks for watching us guys um make sure to check out everyone's channels obviously send send me dog pictures on twitter if you guys just you know and draw more practice a lot and becca if you want to say bye too all right well thank you so much for showing up to the draw with us event for vidcon now we had a lot of fun we hope you guys did as well um like i said before i'm with let me explain studios all of our links are in or i there's no description but they're below they are i've been told and uh we're also over on discord vidcon now is also on discord and we have an animators corner if you want to take the conversation there after we've all logged off and uh thank you so much for tuning in but now we gotta tune out bye everyone <laughs> <laughs>